Hello, my name is Alex, I'm a UNESCO Fellow at UROC, and today I want to talk to you about the rights of nature. Now before I talk about the rights of nature, I want to talk to you about all the environmental problems in the world. This includes climate change, the loss of biodiversity, single-use plastics, the pesticides of agricultural runoff. Now, people know about this. Lawyers know about this, politicians know about it, people know about it. And so there are a lot of laws that try to address it, a lot of laws that try to protect nature. Now, basically all of them protect nature for the human. So the human is the beneficiary of environmental protection efforts. The rights of nature flip this logic and protect nature for nature itself. So a river is not protected because it can generate electricity, you can go fishing there, you can go swimming there, it has aesthetic value. No, you can protect, according to the rights of nature, the river for the river for the river having a healthy ecosystem so the fish and all other animals and plants can thrive there. Now you could say, okay, eventually we want to have a healthy ecosystem. That's cute, but why do we have to make it more complicated with the rights of nature? Well, the answer is that the rights of nature are not just about the results, but about how to get to these results. It's about justice. It's about the just decision-making process. And since humans are part of nature, we are also just animals, it would be unjust to not consider non-human nature in those decision-making processes. So it's, it's a, really a question of political deliberation and of political negotiation. Okay, this is a crazy idea, I agree, but it's also a crazy practice. In fact, there are close to 500 initiatives in almost 50 countries all over the world. North South America, in Asia, the United States have a ton of local regulations. Ecuador, the country in South America, has the rights of nature in its constitution since 2008. The Wanganui, the third largest river of Aotearoa, New Zealand, has rights since 2017. Europe, slowly growing. We're a bit late, but we are getting there. There's the Mar Menor in southeastern Spain, and the Mar Menor is the biggest saltwater lagoon in Europe. It has rights since 2022. So there are Western and non-Western, indigenous and non-indigenous rights of nature. It's a really flexible and wide concept that is increasingly being implemented and thought of all over the world. I hope to have given you a short introduction of the rights of nature. And with this, I thank you and wish you a great day. Yeah.